So on November 4th, we're not going to support Barack the Wealth Spreader's plan because we understand, and I know that you understand, that his plan to redistribute wealth will ultimately punish hard work, and it discourages productivity, and it will stifle the entrepreneurial spirit that made this country the greatest country on earth. opponent's plan is just more big government, and that's, that's the problem, is more big government. That's not the solution. Instead of taking more and spreading your wealth around, what John and I want to do is spread opportunities so that people like you and Joe the Plumber can create new wealth. Yes. See, under a big government, more tax agenda, what you thought was yours would really start belonging to somebody else, to everybody else. If you thought your income, your property, your inventory, your investments were, were yours, no, they would really collectively belong to everybody. Obama, Barack Obama has an ideological commitment to higher taxes. And I say this based on his record. He voted 94 times for higher taxes. 94 times he had an opportunity to be on your side. And instead, no, he was on the side of government. Higher taxes, even for hardworking, middle-class Americans making just $42,000 a year, increasing taxes there. And now Obama is proposing nearly a trillion dollars more in new government growth, but he doesn't tell you where those trillion dollars will come from. They can only come from higher taxes. Big government spenders, too, if you think about it, who would control the House, the Senate, the White House. The power there, the monopoly of power, is something that we need to be discussing in these last 10 days of this campaign unchecked power there with control by big spender, big government agenda in all three, House, Senate, White House. The lessons I believe that we have taught our kids would start to erode. Those lessons about work ethic, hard work being rewarded, and productivity being rewarded. And and lessons about um, the virtues of freedom and independence while being generous and compassionate with others. Higher taxes, more government, misusing the power to tax, leads to government moving into the role of some believing that government then has to take care of us. And government kind of moving into the role as the other half of our family, making decisions for us. Now, they do this in other countries where the people are not free. Let us fight for what is right. John McCain and I, we will put our trust in you, not in government. We will let you keep more of what you earn and produce so that you can grow and thrive and prosper. We will fight for you. We will put our country first. We're going to put government back on the side of the people, and we're going to also confront that $10 trillion federal debt that, yes, the government has dug itself in a hole to that degree, $10 trillion that we're expected to pass on to our kids and our grandkids. That's not right. That's not fair. On our watch, it will not happen. John and I will impose a spending freeze to cover all but the most vital functions of government. We will balance the federal budget by the end of our first term. Yes. You can count on us to follow through on our promises, Iowa, because we're the only candidates in this race with a track record of reform, and we haven't just been talking the talk. John and I both have walked the walk. Yes. As a senator, John McCain has been known as the maverick. He has taken on the wasteful spending and the abuses of power, and he's got the scars to prove it. And as president, he's going to end those abuses once and for all. Now, as mayor, let me tell you a little bit about my own track record as a mayor and a governor so you know where I have been and where I would help lead this country. 
Up there in Alaska, I eliminated personal property taxes and I eliminated small business inventory taxes. Those Reducing those and other taxes and fees, those things that just would hamper growth and, and grow bureaucracy, we made our town a place where businesses could grow and thrive, where we could literally hang that shingle outside our city front door saying, we want businesses there. We want businesses to grow and to thrive and prosper, and it worked. It, these wonderful economic indicators of success that prove that that common sense conservatism, it works and our community took off. And then as governor, yes. As governor, though, I ruffled feathers, didn't make a lot of friends doing it. I put the veto pen to nearly half a billion dollars in wasteful spending in the earmarks up there. We suspended our state fuel tax, and now we're returning a chunk of our state surplus right back to the people of Alaska because it's their money, and they can spend it better than government can spend it for them. Yeah.